A very good evening to you. Well, it is from where I'm sitting, flanked by females. Very unusual. It beats the company I normally keep every day of the week, virtually, apart from those at home, of course. I'm <laughs> delighted to welcome uh, two members of Sheffield's most successful football team here this evening. Now, we can kill all the arguments stone dead because it ain't Sheffield Wednesday and it ain't Sheffield United. The highest ranked team in Sheffield is Sheffield FC Ladies of the FA Women's Super League. I'm delighted to welcome two members of the team to the studio. I'm also delighted to welcome former Sheffield Wednesday defender, former Sheffield Wednesday skipper and Rotherham United stalwart Richard Wood. Richard, good to have you back in the studio. Second visit. Uh, we don't look at uh, league tables if we're Rotherham United at the moment, but we do if we're Sheffield FC ladies. So I'm delighted to welcome here uh, Kennedy Owen, who at uh, 17 is probably the youngest member of the squad. Yeah, yeah, one, one of. There's a, there's a few oh. of us youngers, younguns. Are there? Yeah. Right, and you're just 17. Yeah. You can tell us about one or two of the others. And a veteran, a veteran, <laughs> Emma Johnson, veteran. at 25 years of age, a stalwart of some years standing. Am I right? Some years, go yeah, on, tell me years. how many years. You've been there a while. <laughs> yeah. no idea. Yeah, but it goes back three or four years and it goes back to a, a, a couple of promotions, surely. Um, yeah. yeah, I had a ex I had a short spell at Sheffield a couple of years ago, moved on and then I came back. So I was there for the big promotion, yeah. The big promotion the big to the one, FA yeah. Women's yeah. Super League 2. Donny Bells you played for previously. Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah? Um, well, just for background, before we chat further to these two and bring Richard into the, the conversation, uh, formed in 2003, that's just 13 years ago, meteoric rise from the very bottom of the, the women's uh, pyramid, uh, six league titles in eight seasons, finished fifth in their opening season in the FA Women's Super League 2 out of ten, right in the halfway. That's brilliant, a brilliant effort for the first season. Are you all happy about that? Yeah, I mean, we had a bit of a tough start. We had a few problems, maybe kind of getting all the new players in and gelling, but then once we kind of started to gel, it sort of kicked on a little bit. Yeah. And um, we started to get the results that we wanted and we knew that we could get. Um, we were, we, it's not like we were playing badly, it was just we couldn't get those um, it was just getting the ball in the back we of the net, basically. Score. Yeah, we just couldn't score. Um, and then the mid-season break came, and then after that we were flying. I think we went something like eight games unbeaten, um, mm. and then people started to take notice of us. Yeah, um, it's a very good standard, I thought, yeah. having, having visited. And next season, you're going to be looking at uh, promotion. Is that got to be the target? Um, to, the, to the big league? I don't, the I don't think we've really... We've not really had targets, though, have we? We've just... We just take it game by game, see see how good we, we can perform, and then hopefully we'll be up there. Because we've finished fifth already, so yeah. hopefully Next we just want to get higher and higher. See, it's not just the likes of Richard Wood that takes every game as it comes. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old cliche. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a familiar story, wherever you play the game, that putting the ball in the back of the net is the hardest skill. And of course, you at Rotherham United, your job is to keep them out, but it's been a hard, long season for <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, we haven't been doing too well at that. Uh, we are conceding far too many goals and that's why we are bottom of the league at the moment. Yeah, uh, yeah. We haven't been too bad scoring, scoring wise. We've got Danny Ward up front who, who's in the top leading goal scorers in the league. Um, it's just at the other end and we need to concentrate on that. And we have been in training for the last few weeks, well, from the start of the season really, but since Paul Warren's come in, working on it back to basics and hopefully we, we see some lie at the end of the tunnel with it. Yeah, Paul Warren and John Brecken. I was with John Brecken yesterday, a festive uh, do media and managers getting, getting together. Two very, very popular guys, these two. You, you can't help but like them. You, you get some uh, managers who are quite confrontational yeah. people, but I, I, I bet that these two have got really the support of players. They have. The, well, training's been brilliant over the last week or so. Um, Warren is so positive all the time. Uh, the lads respect him, the lads love him. And then Brex has come in as well, and everybody knows him. He does the lounges upstairs, or he has been doing the lounges upstairs for the executive uh, home games. And he's a likable character, and mm. he's very experienced. Mm. He knows the game inside out. He's been around for years. Um, and it's nice to have a different voice in training other than Warnie's, because yes. he's, sometimes he's too positive. 
Is it? Uh, <laughs> it just encourages and encourages, and it's great. It's a good atmosphere, even though we're bottom of the league at the moment. In training, it's a great atmosphere. So if we can get that onto the pitch and start picking up points, that's that's what we all want to see. Well, you've only played just the one game yeah. under Warren so far. It was a narrow defeat at Burton. That's a. Uh, a legacy of that, yeah. of that that game. You were blaming me for the Twitter bit no. where I selected to promote this programme, but yeah. I think it flattered you. No, looking at you now. you. no, I don't do well in action picks, and <laughs> I think every every week I've got a bump or a bang, and it's usually in my head. My teeth have been knocked out. I get scars. I get yeah. everything. So it's part of the part and parcel of the game for me. I don't mind. My yeah. missus isn't too happy about it. <laughs> when I come home embattled centre half yeah. and you're not going to get that fixed until the end of your career the nose then no, how many um, times have you been broken i suppose you I break think, it once and i think i've broke it five times it may be more but yeah. who knows now it's that much of a mess and yeah. it's all over the place isn't it? So. <laughs> <laughs> on a serious subject as it were noses being out of joint it's probably high time that richard cleared up a, a few things which Sheffield Wednesday and the manner of his departure from, from Hillsborough because there are two sides to every story and I think supporters and one or two sniping comments aimed at Richard both before his previous appearance <coughs> on this show and this appearance from Sheffield Wednesday supporters about how he came to leave Hillsborough in 2010. It's your team, it's the team you've always supported. Yep. Um, before we go back to the two girls here, let, can we just recap on that because you left to go to Coventry at a time when the club was in financial crisis. I mean, that was almost a perpetual situation yep. at that time. But it was unexpected. You'd had 170-odd appearances for the club. Um, and supporters, some, not all, roundly look back and blame you for walking out. They, they feel that you were disloyal to the football club. You went to Coventry on loan and then for £300,000. What's your side of the story for the first time? Well, it wasn't as simple as walking out. Um, it, it were long protracted contract negotiations uh, that started off offering me contracts well before this point, um, well before into the previous season. Um, and as captain the previous season, Brian Laws brought Darren Purse in, in the summer as captain um, and the contracts they were offering me I didn't feel as though were justified um, and that's not me being greedy or anything like that I didn't want to leave the club but there's got to be a, there's, there comes a point where maybe it's time to move on and mm. you see footballers doing it all the time it's it's very unlikely unless you're at the top teams like Man United where you're a one-man club mm. um, and fans have got to Mm. I suppose understand that it's a job at the end of the day and then towards the end of it when I did leave on loan uh, me and Brian Laws had a disagreement as well uh, we had a few issues about it I got put on the transfer list I got told I won't play for the club again uh, which really put me in a bad light with the fans I got I was injured at the time I got back fit this mm. is a long story trying to be short but I got back fit and then I found myself on the bench he put me on at Hillsborough I got booed by the fans which was one not very nice mm. to play in seeing as i've been at the club all all my time mm. uh, my man scored from a corner <laughs> i got blamed for that saying i didn't care about the club i didn't care for the lads mm. i didn't i, I didn't want to be at the club which isn't true i'm anybody that knows me that's why i've got a nose like this i give 100 percent every time i give nothing less i'm not a talented skillful football player but i just give it my all i'm a good solid defender and mm. to be to be called out like that I didn't like and I got hung out to dry really so I had no other option when it came to it in the end I, I left and, and so you did on. you didn't ask for a transfer you were on contract you could have just stayed on that yeah contract. I could have, I could have stayed. simply stay on yeah that I could have I could have stayed on the contract there was obviously interest from other clubs mm. um, it's not all about money but that was a factor in it as well um, with the contracts that the club were offering me um, and it was at the end it was the right time to leave and the manager as well at that time sort of made the decision clear yeah. as well which, which which is fine things like this happen and mm. you have disagreements and you move on from it and the club move on from it 
there's that phrase part and parcel of the game which is used quite a lot and there are very few grudges I've found held in football that, yeah. that usually these situations occur yeah. and they're almost business situations and then people can talk to each other. So do you, do you get on well with the parties still yeah. involved? I, when I, I love going back to Hillsborough on Wednesday and seeing all the old faces there. Yeah. Um, I've got, I haven't spoke to Brian Laws since but if I bumped into him there, there'd be no issues with me and I'd, we'd yeah. have a, probably a good chat. Yeah. Um, but at the time, business and how football's run, that's things like this happen. Mm. Um, I just wish it maybe a stayed behind closed doors a bit more b as between us as a private group, as a club, and, and mm. me as a player. But it got brought out into the fans' knowledge, and I suppose that tarnished my reputation with the club after coming up through the ranks there. Yeah. Um, because you were a big player at that time. It's not yeah. like saying now when they've got any number yeah, yeah, of yeah. Yeah, star players. Yeah. At that time, uh, with a pretty average team, yeah. relatively, yeah. you were a big player, weren't you? Yeah, I'd yeah. class myself as that as well. Um, obviously, the club's moved on massively since then, and it's good to see as well. That's where they deserve to be back in the Premier League. Well, I hope they do, but at that point, yeah, I was, well, I was a main part of the team, and it was disappointing how it all ended. And, do I regret it? No, because you've just got to get on with get on with life and get on with whatever mm. career path you you walk down. Really, well, you've had some abuse on successive visits to Hillsborough <laughs> since then, not least last season when uh, when when you we, when Rotherham we won, won yeah, uh, under yeah. Neil Warnock. Yeah, uh, one of several managers. You've only been at Rotherham uh, a couple of years, and I think you've had four or five managers already. So we're going to come come to that, and also the Kenny Jacket situation, which left all of us surprised and bamboozled. Yeah. Um, you, you haven't got this, have you? This managerial speculation and uncertainty. Zoe Johnson's there. I'm not aware of any rumours that she's about to be fired. Not after her record, eh? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't think she's going to get sapped any time soon. No, no she's doing it. a good job, I, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and how does she approach that job? Zoe has been in the studio here and, and talked to us. Are there any flying teacups from from her and shouting and um, a bit of swearing? Or she's or is scary. <laughs> she is scary when she's if she's telling you off or if she's having if you mm. have a she? team. Yeah, yeah. She might not come across that, but she has if, got if that side. Got, if if she's not happy, then we you know, know about, about it. it. Really? So you got yeah. a half time rollicking now and again. Yeah. If we deserve yeah. one, yeah. Half time do you, at training. Do you ever deserve one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think every yeah. team deserves uh, yeah. one every now yeah. and then. Yeah, it's sometimes you just need that, don't you? Just brings us back down to earth. Yeah. And then you've got to prove her wrong. Yeah, Get well, out exactly. There. Yeah. 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 I mean, you finished above some some quite big names, big name clubs, didn't you? In the yeah. in the in the in the table. Yeah. Uh, trailing below, you. are you around the same place as Everton, for instance, yeah. uh, or even above them? I'm, I'm not quite sure because when I looked, I was quite impressed. Um, yeah, uh, Everton. I think they ended up finishing third. All oh, right. Um, yeah. But. Like we did, we we've got points off all the top three teams that were looking to go up for promotion, yeah. and we're fighting for promotion. But it's just we couldn't find that consistency, especially at the beginning of the season. And it was, I mean, we had that good block in the middle. I think that pushed us on. But then there were some games that we probably lost that we should have won. And then it was just, yeah. I mean, we did we did we did do all right. But it's just that consistency. We just didn't have it. Um, but I think now we've got used to the league. Um, all the players are used to it, Zoe's used to it. Um, I think next year we'll kick on and yeah. find some consistency. And I mean, it's a the, tough act to follow, though, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, yeah, it really yeah. is. We have I mean, set the bar quite high, but yeah. um, uh, we're quite confident that we can do quite well next season, so we'll, just, that, we'll see. That word expectation for next season, isn't it? Which you didn't have to contend no. with this season. No, no. Right, you've yeah, got it. Exactly, like this season yeah. we had no, 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 nothing to prove. We had nothing, no pressure no. at all, did we? We just. No. We just Did went out there, week. yeah. Like we said Added. earlier, take every game as it sort mm -hmm. of comes, really. So you both said that now. Yeah. Mm. yeah that's one each. One each. <laughs> Rich, <laughs> you need to say yeah. that as well. <laughs> you need to say that. I'm sorry to remind you, but it's 15 games without a win for Rotherham. Uh, it must feel like a, just a, a, a recurring nightmare every t every time you go on the field. I think that's the problem at the moment. Um, it, losing can become a habit, and that's where we find ourselves. We need to dig in and work hard to just change the change the tide and once you get that win who knows you, you get confidence momentum starts to build momentum is going the wrong way at the minute and it just seems to be loss after loss which is not good 
I mean, the, the, the score lines aren't horrendous in most cases. Two, I think the previous two games have both been 2-1 two, two, defeats, a home game, although you were yeah. pretty well beaten up to 2-0 and yeah. then you got a goal back. You scored against Leeds, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. You headed yeah. a goal yeah, against did, yeah. uh, Leeds and then you lost 2-1 at Burton. Home this weekend to QPR. And you talk about the change of atmosphere behind the scenes. Maybe that will be reflected in the crowd as well for this game because Kenny Jackett's gone and you've got a very popular figure in Paul Warren. Uh, do you feel that, that there will be that pulling together? I hope, I, well, that's what, I'm, that's what we're all hoping for. Um, it won his first home game. Yeah. I'm sure the fans will get behind him. Uh, he's a likeable character, everybody loves him. Um, and we all want to win. Just Well, we obviously we all want to win every week, no question, but because we've got Warney in charge, we're, the lads are desperate for him to get a win. And yeah. He says he wants another picture of himself on the stadium, so that's what, he, that's what he's <laughs> aiming for. If he can get if he can get a first win in 15 or yeah. 16, then I'm sure he might get a picture put on that. Yeah, one. and he, he bursts into tears at regular intervals. Yeah, that's yeah. A, I, you know, this is so unusual. You know, I, 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 I would be making a sexist remark if I were to say that you're more likely to see tears in a ladies' game than in a men's game. But I, but it's actually factually true, I would say. And, Oh no, well, maybe well, not sometimes. true. Sometimes. <laughs> Wear your heart on your sleeve, don't you? <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing wrong with it. And it takes a big man to cry. Yeah. No, uh, that just shows what sort of person he is and how passionate he is about the club and how much he wants the club to do well and us as players. He's right yeah. behind us, he believes in us, and he give it ev in the training last week, he'd prepared us as well as he could do. Mm. There was nothing else he could have done to alter anything and obviously it's up to us when we go on the pitch and we let him down as disappointed as we let him down and I listened to his radio interview after after the game against Burton and it, put, it, it put a lump in my throat it's, it, it's it just shows what a great guy is and how much it means to him yeah because what is in the job that he's in now as well pre-match and post-match yeah. he was choked yeah talking about the honor of, of, of yeah. being in charge albeit caretaker yeah. um, I don't know about you, but I can see it going on until the end of the season because it's very hard to make a replacement permanent manager in the situation rather than at the moment. You're so many points adrift. Yeah. I can see him continuing for quite quite a while yet, and I really do hope the results turn. Um, we'll talk about Sheffield Wednesday and the remain, remainder of the programme. Richard's view on the team at the moment. When James Gregg joins us for the second half, we'll talk about the Blades as well. They're at home to uh, Swindon this weekend. Um, mentioning um, the Owls reminds me that uh, Richard has got a blog. You, you're training to be a journalist. Yep. Um, how, how far short are you of completing this, this training course I now? Hopefully graduate in the summer. Excellent. The summer. Um, yeah. yeah, so part of my, one of my modules at the moment is web journalism. Uh, we've been learning how to blog, how to create a blog, and that's part of his work. So I have just yeah. set that up. Um, so you now have a blog yes. out there, and it's what? What's the address? Richardwoodfootballer.com. <laughs> very, yeah. very original. www.richardwoodfootball.com. That's all one word. Footballer. So Richardwoodfootballer. Yeah. Is that all that one yeah, word? One. Richardwoodfootballer.com. Do, 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 do have a look, <laughs> and you can do your own critique on Richard's work, <laughs> which I do regularly because I read his Sheffield Star column. That's out again tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and he really does an excellent column. It's difficult for a player, a current player, to write because you're absolutely treading that I am. tight, very, tight rope. A very fine line. Um, there's been a few times where I haven't been allowed to write honestly because I'm contracted to the, to the club. Yeah. Um, there's been a few issues, like the, I'd have given an example, easy one, the Checker Trade Trophy yes. I wrote about, which I don't agree how it's set up this year. And I had to alter my words because the, all the teams signed up for it, which I didn't realise at the yeah. time. The club outlined to me, it's not the league's fault that set it up. It's the, all the teams knew what they were getting into yeah. and signed up for it. I didn't put that to start with. No. I was criticising <laughs> the league, which obviously can look bad on the club yeah. when, it, when it's promoted and when it's published. So obviously I had to change that. They informed me, the club did. And... I made my alterations to it. But it's good that they're supporting you in this venture, that Rotherham yeah. are actually helping you with this. Kennedy, you're going to get substituted at half time. I'm really sorry about that. Emma's staying for the second half. James Gregg's going to come in. Um, 
Have you enjoyed this 20 minutes? Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll have you, you, you in again. And I wish you all the very best for next season. Ex-Manchester United youngster, um, Kennedy Owen. Do follow her on Twitter. A five-minute break, just a five-minute half-time break. Rejoin us for part two. Richard's still here. See you.